In 2020, I designed and released the Photon Smasher. An instrument for listening to and making music with light. So, using the light that it comes with, let's have a listen. So what you're hearing there is the sound of the LEDs. Now, when light hits a solar panel, it generates electricity. With an LED, what's actually happening is that that light is flashing on and off at a rate faster than we can see. When it does flash on and off, it creates a click. When those clicks happen fast enough, we perceive them as a pitch. So let me give you a demonstration of that. Here is a bicycle light. So I'm gonna put this on its flashing mode and you'll see what I mean. got a, quite a cool swung rhythm there so we've got a click because it's going on and off yeah if I go to the mode where it's got a constant stream we'll hear a pitch this one's quite a high pitch now what's really cool is that we can start to combine some of these together so we've got our constant light pitch our pitched light source and we've got our flashing light pretty cool. Now I've already been experimenting quite a lot with this for making music. But this instrument is aimed at a younger audience, so it's missing some features that professional musicians like me might want. For example, at the moment you're noticing that I'm having to put everything on top of the device, and I've only got a limited area to work with there. So it would be great if it was a much smaller device, much thinner, so that I could use an entire tabletop. It's also currently an active device. It has a nine volt battery inside. That nine volt battery is powering an amplifier circuit to drive a speaker. It doesn't need a speaker. If I'm using it for performance, I wanna use the line out. I don't actually need a battery to be able to do that, to make it passive. The solar panel is giving me everything I need, so I just need that connected directly to an output. So in November 2020, I was successful in my application to the New Voices program with Sound and Music, an 18 month long composer support program. I'm receiving project support and a production grant to turn this into an instrument specifically for performing and making music with it too. So the plan for my project is to not only create a new version of this that is aimed at people like me, performers, field recordists, etc. But also to then create music with it too. So I'm going to be putting together an ensemble. The plan currently is um, to work with a drummer and a bassist to put on a concert in February 2021 of music that really uh, revolves, is centred around the Photon Smasher and using light as a sound source. So over the next couple of months, um, through these video diaries, I'm going to be uh, documenting my journey through experimenting with this technology, turning it into a, an artist-focused instrument for professional musicians and artists to work with. And also, at the same time, really um, experimenting with what's possible. There's so many possibilities with this technology. I mean, the obvious ones are what we've seen so far with, with listening to light in its rawest um, form through things like LEDs and, you know, not only have I got drawers full of components, I've got drawers full of lights. <laughs> Recently I put out an open call and people just sent me lights. Let, let me show you some. Um, one of my favourite is this SpongeBob SquarePants light. Thanks, Chris. And uh, I think this came from some sort of like panto show. Um, this has a pretty cool sound. Ravy. There's some amazing sounds out there. Um, 
but that's just kind of one element of it. So you, we've seen how a click, a flashing light creates um, a click, and when you speed that up, it becomes a frequency. What if I was in control of the rate that that was flashing? Well, then I can, I can. That's a synthesizer, right? It's an oscillator that is using a solar panel. What's really cool about that is you've then got a synthesizer that can be messed with physically. So I could have a synthesizer that was open on the top and it would sound different in every environment that it's in. So it would be a synthesizer that is really kind of organic as to the environment. It really responds to the environment that it's in. There's all sorts of possibilities, but with this project, I'm trying not to let that scope get too big. I'm trying to just focus on getting the hardware sorted, so getting the circuit to be as simple as possible and getting it in its most robust format as well so that I can do all these other experiments with it as well. And then of course, make some music with it. So don't just think as an instrument designer, think as a musician and start to create work with it too. So what I'm gonna do first with this project is design the circuit. You can see here I've switched to a circular solar panel, um, mostly just because I think it looks cooler. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason. Um, but there is a slight circuit design change from the current version, what's called an RC filter, specifically a high pass filter. So I'm gonna be cutting a lot of the low end information that the solar panel generates. So I'm you know, around sort of say 30 Hertz, the real lower end of human hearing. I'm gonna try and cut all the information below that. Now it's not like a brick wall filter, it's slightly um, of a smoother curve, but the current version, there's a lot of low end that gets in the way. All it is, is we've got a couple of capacitors here and then um, a resistor and the values for these have been chosen to, um, to, to kind of get the cutoff response that I want. Now, sonically, when you listen to this compared to the current version, there's not much difference. The difference really is that I've just cut out the low end. So it's pretty imperceivable um, if you're just say listening over uh, laptop speakers or so, but when you look at a spectrogram of both of the signals, you'll see that there's just loads of low end being cut out, which makes it way more useful. So let's have a quick listen to it. It's a tiny bit of a thinner sound, but not by much. Now, if you compare that to the current version, way more bass, potentially too much. So with the circuit designed, what I've got to do now is turn this into a circuit board, a PCB. Um, I really want to experiment with PCB artwork, it's something I've never done before, but there's some amazing artwork on the Photon Smasher by George Yarnton, and I want to get some of that onto the PCB. And then I'm also going to be experimenting with actual, like the physical form of the object as well. So I'm in my head, I'm kind of imagining like an ice hockey puck, um, sort of about sort of maybe 15 um, millimeters thick. So you know, way thinner than the current version, way, way thinner, which means it will sit on a table much lower down and I can then position lights around a table because because it, because I'm working with light here, I'm working with the in, the inverse square law, is it? I think that's how you say it? Which is the closer that light, the louder it's gonna be, or the brighter it's gonna be, which is loudness in my case. But if I move that light source further away, it means I can have more um, fine control over volumes and I can position lights much easier to create soundscapes. So I'm gonna be experimenting with physical formats, thinking about how I can um, make them the most useful for performers. You know, do I want to put like a threaded insert on there so that I can attach it to like a mic stand? Um, or do I want to have little um, like slits cut into it so I can put a strap through it? You know, should it be like palm size so you can do that? I don't know, I want to experiment, that's the whole point. So if you're interested in this, this technology, um, this way of making music, then yeah, please do subscribe and follow this journey as I start to experiment with this tech and really consider what's possible. Um, you know, if you can think of ideas that I haven't, then definitely get in touch, leave a comment. How would you use this? What would you do with this circuit? Let me know, I'm like, I'm all ears. I'm expecting these videos to maybe be monthly. I'm not gonna set myself up to fail and promise you weekly videos, that's just not gonna happen, but I do post more regularly on my Instagram, so if you're interested in seeing music being made with this, which I'm doing fairly regularly, um, then yeah, please consider um, following me on Instagram and checking out some videos there. Most recently, I've been using this to trigger sequences with the Racket Baby 8 step sequencer. So 
I'm looking at using it as a CV source, which is something I didn't even get into, but that's like a whole other conversation. Using LEDs to, to like integrate into um, modular synthesizers. Uh, look, Mum, though, computer's got a great video on that. So thank you very much. My name has been Fraser. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.